So we have, this is the first of a three month series. We're going to meet in October and November as well. And we, we basically have a, a, a type of presentation each month that is in a series and they're all somewhat related. So this month we have, uh, we have Jessica and Jonathan Cox and they're with Aqua Vita. spent the last 15 years helping businesses connect with customers in over 25 industries across the U.S. and around the world. They are members of the Tulsa Southside Rotary and will be handing out dictionaries to underprivileged third graders later this month. We've done that in Bixby for several years and that's a, it's a ton of fun. Mm -hmm. It really is. Um, they also do fitness coaching, rock climbing, and they grow monster tomato plants. Right. So it's please help our yard. <laughs> help me in welcoming Jessica and Jonathan Cox this morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I like that energy. So if I didn't get the chance to speak with you earlier, I'm sorry. I tried to work my way around the room, but uh, you should all have, or if you don't all have them, you'll have to share them. A creative brief on your table. We're not going to fill that out during the discussion this morning, but it is key to what we're talking about, which is one of my favorite topics, and that is story. So Jessica, you want to take us away here? Hello. Well, this is not a new subject. Branding and story are as old as language and possibly even older. We've been telling stories about where to find water, how to hunt, and who's the best hunter. Those things have been with us since the dawn of time. Information age, not much has changed. There's still the story of who's the best hunter and who's going to help their clients the most. You also have the problem of there are a lot more stories and they are available worldwide. So the question is, what makes you unique? What makes your story memorable and will it be remembered? So. This means you need to actually engage your customers. You need to make them part of your story. And you need to have a story that is worth them becoming excited about and engaged with. So to that end, you are actually building relationships through story. It's not necessarily about the facts. It's about the relationship that you create and the emotional impact you have on the people that you're telling the story to. So I'd like to introduce someone who is phenomenal at this. And his name is Peter Buber, former chairman and CEO of Sony Pictures, and he has personally produced or co-produced movies that have made three billion over and over. So the guy knows a thing or two about story. And thanks to the wonderful event sponsor, we have sound. Woo! So the concept is, how do you make it a win-win proposition? How do you build relationships more than transactions? And that's what narrative story, telling purposeful stories can do for you as a absolute game changer tool in any part of life science, in anything you want to do, whether you're selling Tupperware at home, where you're Nancy Traversi selling barefoot books and the barefoot lifestyle, whatever you're doing, the conceit is there is an emotional generosity in the telling purposeful story. So what is me to we? Well, funny, it's a little way to remember it, me to we, because you're telling the story. Just turn the me over and you got we. And that's all you have to do. You have to just recognize there is another human being with desires and fears and anxiety and interest who you want to make not as a passenger with your telling purposeful story, but a participant. If you make them a participant, a magic thing happens. They own it. You don't control them. And when they own it, and you don't control them, and you engage them, that's the word, not just talk at them, but you engage them, guess what happens? It's emotional transportation at its best. And you know what they do? They don't just remember the story, they pay it forward. And the magic is when they pay it forward as their own, not yours, when you surrender control. So the whole key is, is turning me into we. So I am going to hand it over to Jonathan, and he has an example of how that actually works. <laughs> Just kidding. Which one are we on? No. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, a few years ago, we worked with a financial company locally. They've been around for about three decades. They have a lot of history. And they came to us and they were 
ready to rebrand. Their brand had been around for a while, and they just felt that it wasn't moving their audience the way that they wanted to. So integrity and precision were two of the values when we filled out the nice little creative briefs that we've set down in front of you guys that they identified for their business. When they sat down with me and they, they said they'd had this problem for a decade, how do you show people integrity and precision visually? How do you express that story? So I went back and I talked to my illustrator and we were sitting there for you know, a few hours going, gosh, integrity, how do you visually show that? So, you know, we started to do a little research, looked around, and we came across a really cool story it ties into one of our nation's founders, Abraham Lincoln. So Abraham Lincoln was also an entrepreneur, and he, he owned a grocery store and a surveying business and a few other things. And there was a little old lady that came in, and she overpaid him six and a half cents. He walked three miles to reimburse her that six and a half cents. A couple of years later, his business partner died, and he was the money man in the company. And he left Abraham Lincoln with about $1,000 worth of debt, which doesn't sound like a whole lot now, but back then it was huge. Rather than going bankrupt, Abe Lincoln earned that money back through his surveying business. The community was so supportive of him and his actions during that time that they actually paid for his surveying equipment, knowing the kind of man that he was, so that he could pay back that thousand dollars. So Abraham Lincoln embodied that idea of integrity for us when we were doing that research. And then we started to think, how do we show precision in a brand? Well, they're a financial company. And what is the most precise unit in American currency? Well, it's a penny. So then we go, aha, we've got it. <laughs> we had a visual. Ta-da! You may have seen this brand, Southwestern Payroll. They are our payroll company. And fortunately, the penny and Abraham Lincoln's image are public domain. We had to check that before we did it. But uh, this brand was something that gave their salespeople a gateway to telling the story of their company, talking about integrity and precision as being a part of their brand. So rather than just showing them some stale typo typographic logo, you know, a font or something like that, their salespeople hand this card out or a brochure or whatever, and they go, why Benny? Why Abe Lincoln? I'm glad you asked. And that's the story of Southwestern Payroll. So this just they already had those values. This just gave them a visual way of expressing that and communicating it to the customers and bringing them into that story. So one thing in terms of application and what you can do in your business is think about the materials that you have right now, your brand, your brochures, your business card, your website. Are those communicating a story about your company? Are they giving you an opening to talk about what's important to you, your core values? And how can they possibly create that opening to do that? And I actually have another example from within you guys, from Jeff, as a CPA story of how he was able to help a client. Uh, yeah, I do. Um, <laughs> generally, as CPAs, we're, we're focused on, in our business, and saving people money and uh, reducing their tax burden. But this particular story uh, was with the lady that is starting a, a 501c3 a nonprofit organization and she's reaching out to cancer patients. And so she came in the other day and was telling us about this organization that she wanted to start. It was just the passion, you know, at the end of the meeting I said to her, you know, you really need to develop a passion for this because I can't see it. And she was just all over the place and she was just so excited about this. And the things that she needed to happen are not that difficult for us to accomplish. It's a matter of setting something up with the state, getting an identification number, and letting, just turning her loose. So I was uh, privy to some emails just yesterday where she was communicating with my teammate, and she's like, you know, are you gonna get this for me this week? Because I really wanna start getting donations going. And my teammate was like, yeah, we, we got it set up. We're just waiting for the approval. We got your identification number. Oh, by the way, here's your um, certificate of organization with the state of Oklahoma. And she sent it to her via email. Well, her response back was, oh my goodness, this is just the most amazing thing ever. I'm going to take this to my mom, and she's going to be so excited to see this. It's just going to make her day, and it's just, it's just the best thing ever. 
and to us, it was just a certificate of organization. <laughs> to her mother, who she's basically starting this cancer organization because her mom is, has cancer and is dying of cancer, the concept of her taking this document to her while she's somewhat on her deathbed and it making her day was, was a big deal to me. And I responded back to my te teammate that uh, sometimes it's not all about the dollars and cents. Sometimes when you really make a difference, it, it really can make your day. So that's my story. So that's a really tough action. Nothing digital about this machine. Temperature, speed of roast, all of that is manually set. Paid about $23,000 to refurbish this machine. said that we've got roof damage over on Southwest Boulevard. So we went over there and in like 15 feet of the roof had just blown, whoa, just blown straight backwards. And so uh, it was like five o'clock in the afternoon. So we went ahead and uh, dispatched another crew out. We're able to, I mean, it blew the whole landboard, board, everything off. We had, to, we had to get lumber, we had to get tarps and and we had to get a container out there, so we had, we had connections with the container. But we were able to take care of him. And we try to do that for all of our customers if they have an emergency situation like that. So that's just a, a, a way of, of taking care of one of our customers and kind of a friend at the same time. And impacting his tenants too. So you yes, and keeping his tenants from yeah. losing their 
merchandise. Transgenerational, and they don't know who's going to do what yet. 
or they're looking at markets that have shrunk around them, sort of like shrink wrap, you know, around fruit, and they can't quite get out of there to be eaten by the customer. So uh, what I have to do is come in and find a way to help them get out of their box. And that takes a while sometimes. Uh, sometimes it doesn't take very long. Here's an example of a local company. Um, I don't really have permission to give names, so I, I can do that privately for you, but publicly I probably shouldn't do that. Uh, when I came up here 20 years ago, this local company was uh, stymied at a low to mid-level seven-figure growth. They had been growing for about 20 years from almost nothing out of the back room of some people out of the oil and gas business. And they were wanting very much to get out of Tulsa into the world, but to stay rooted in Tulsa. And you know, everything shifted. It went south to Houston, so they moved to Houston. Then it shifted and it went north to Canada. They went north to Canada. They had offices all over the place. But they were boxed in by how extended they were. And they were really only running, you know, three to five mil. And it was eating them alive. They couldn't get loose. You know, they owned a building that they couldn't sell, and blah, 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 blah. So uh, I went in and I said, who is your heir apparent? Well, they had no succession plan. I said, who's the most talented person in the company? Well, we're all talented. We've got <laughs> the most talented people in the business. Upstream oil and gas, right? So look around, folks. There's lots of talent in upstream oil and gas in this part of the country. And I said, well, how do you know they're the most talented? And one voice popped up from the back of the room and said, well, I know why. And I said, really? He said, yeah, because we don't pay them until they get results. And I said, you're the successor. Come forward to the board. <laughs> <laughs> so as a matter of fact, over time and a few months more, we were able to get them partnered with companies in Canada and Houston and around the country. And today they're running on the order of eight to nine figures on a regular basis. They're partnered with the three largest consolidated oil firms in the world in both NPO and FPO projects. Thank you. So that's what we wanted to share with you guys. And the rest of this time, ask someone about their stories. It's really interesting to kind of know what businesses are doing in the community for their clients and even beyond that. <laughs> Who here has heard of the seven habits of highly effective people or Stephen Covey as an author? Okay, cool. So a lot of them. Awesome. Did you know that he wrote another book before he died called The Eighth Habit? Okay, so the eighth habit is basically that you need to have your own voice. In this day and age, there are a lot of effective people out there, and technology has leveled the playing field for a lot of people that wouldn't have been uh, have been as effective. So really think about what makes you unique. Tell your story to people. It's not enough just to be effective anymore. You have to have a story that moves the heart. Because where the heart goes, the mind, and ultimately, the wallet will follow. So, thanks, guys.